Chapter 466, Lu Xu's Death Lu Xu had given up. In fact, everyone had their own personality and we should not judge anyone for his or her interests. There was no right or wrong, but Lu Xu just found it hard to accept such a preference. Besides, Yu Mingyu was a normal person under usual circumstances. Lu Xu would never have suspected it if Yu Mingyu did not tell him so. After the filming was complete, Lu Xu left at once. Before that, Zhong Yutong reminded, the deep sea white sand will be delivered to you in due course. Remember, don't go to school anytime soon in case you give it away. Lu Xu was happy. Which means I don't need to take the exams too. You still have to sit for the exams. Speaking of which, I believe you can do well since you are such a good student. Zhang Yutong dismissed the topic with a wave of his hand. After a long pause, he added, I've shed my blood for our country too. Lu Xu Instead of sending him back on foot, Zhang Yutong asked an Earth-type metahuman to transport him home via soils. Then, he urged Lu Xu not to show up in public in the coming days, no matter what. On his way back, he received a mass message from the Heavenly Network. Major Lu Xu was assassinated last night. All Luocheng Heavenly Network members to be on guard and strictly police every vital line of communication. The show must be complete in full set. Lu Xu believed that in addition to the message, the Heavenly Network would really start to lock down all communication lines in search of any suspects. But Lu Xu found it difficult to understand. Are they really going to spend so much time and energy just for the deep sea white sand? Undeniably, deep sea white sand was a precious object, an excellent means for defense and attack. It was indestructibly hard and perfectly compatible with Earth-type metahuman's abilities. But was it really necessary to mobilize so many forces just for that? Wait a minute. Yu Mingyu. Lu Xu suddenly realized the key issue. What had Yu Mingyu been doing after his death? He became an assassin, wiping out the unwanted. Now, was he going to face the same fate himself, since Yu Mingyu's job had terminated? To live a new life under a different identity for a period of time after his original self was dead? Very likely. After a taste of freedom in the Chang remains, Lu Xu had begun to understand Li Xiao's interpersonal style. Indeed, you can't cause anyone trouble in your own country, at least for the sake of your conscience. But when he was overseas, there was no need for such concern. Strength was the universal language there. At present, who could subdue Lu Xu except class Bs and above? No one. The Earth-type metahuman was about to go once he sent Lu Xu home. Please do not leave your home these few days, Major Lu. Lu Xu asked. What did you call me? Major Lu. Why, the person was stunned. Then he saw Lu Xu beaming with joy. Sounds good. From Chang Ping's distress, plus 199. Suddenly he remembered Lieutenant Zhang Yutong's reminder to not get too close to Major Lu unless he was seeking unhappiness. The news of Lu Xu's death had been sent to every member of the Heavenly Network, including Dao Yuan class students. It came too abruptly. Just a moment ago, people were still discussing about a prodigy girl who jumped from grade 8 to 12. Everyone was in disbelief. Was she the cream of geniuses? No one had expected to meet such a genius in their own life. However, it was soon overwhelmed by Lu Xu's death, because no one had actually foreseen it, and more shockingly, he was killed in Luo Cheng. Why was he killed once he was back from Ko Chang remains? And who killed him? At this moment, the warrant for Lu Xu's arrest was suddenly revealed on the Golden Foundation Forum. It was the first time for the Darkness Kingdom to be exposed on a public platform. In the past, it had only been a myth that belonged solely to the cultivation realm. Furthermore, every section of the Darkness Kingdom was photographed and posted online. It was not captured by screenshots because it would allow the IP address of the device used to be tracked. A public outcry broke out in the country. People were furious that their practitioner was blatantly chased after by other organizations. 
As a result, the Darkness Kingdom quickly anonymized every account. But it was already too late. Then, more people followed up on the cause and effect of the incident. It was then that people finally learned that the young man named Lu Xu had actually bypassed his class C level and killed the class B collection of God's fighter, Nojoa Takenabu. Although it was also revealed that the fight happened during Nojoa Takenabu's weakening period, after his abilities were elevated temporarily, people did not care so much about that. Class Bs were still Class Bs, and Nojoa Takenabu would not be that weak no matter what state he was in. Thus, in front of someone who had even scared away Li Xiao, Lu Xu had been brave and smart. Nonetheless, he was later assassinated for his heroic act. Therefore, Lu Xu had become a national hero in a short period of time. But there was no information about Lu Xu available online. Any documents relevant to him had been safely kept by the Heavenly Network the moment he was enrolled in the Daoyuan class, just like other Daoyuan students. But his files had an even higher classification level, accessible only by Heavenly Kings. Even Lu Xu himself had not expected to become a national hero this way. Then, Lu Hong, the marker of Lu Xiaoyu's Chinese paper, was suddenly reminded of Lu Xiaoyu's essay, titled, My Daily Experience with the National Hero Xu. Mixed feelings infiltrated her heart. Chapter 467, Coral's Tears While the connoisseur recognizes the artistry, the layman simply enjoys the show. Thus, to outsiders, the news was only a topic for after-meal conversations, but to the members of the Heavenly Network. They were well aware of the complications behind Lu Xu's ability to kill Nojoa Takenabu. Nowadays, the six Class A's were the center of attention of the world. Two from the Heavenly Network, one from the Golden Foundation, one, whose identity remained unknown, that fought with Li Xiani at Kochang Remains, one from the Phoenix Society, newly ascended at the North Pole, and the last one was a priest from the Department of Faith Theory, ascended over the Arctic Ocean. But that did not mean that Class B auras would be eclipsed by them. Still, Class Bs were the representation of the strongest power in the cultivation realm. Yet, a Class B pro from the Collection of Gods was still slain by a 17-year-old Class C from the Heavenly Network. The incident itself was unbelievable. Now, in the aftermath of the young man's assassination, many people were giving it a serious thought how many young geniuses the Heavenly Network actually had. A battle between the Heavenly Network and the Collection of Gods was looming over the horizon. Everyone knew it. How could the Heavenly Network be expected to suffer such indignities silently? All of a sudden, the request for a confrontation grew increasingly louder across the network, like a pot of boiling, bubbling water. Some people felt pitiful for the death of a genius at such a young age. If he could kill a Class B at Class C, what kind of monster would he become when he ascended to Class B? Meanwhile, the incident felt surreal for Class Aptitude geniuses who went to the capital with Lu Xu. How could a boy who was lively and healthy in front of them a few months ago suddenly disappear like this? Led by Hao Ji Chao, more than a hundred people stood solemnly outside the courtyard in the Luhai Lane. They were the pursuers of Lu Xu and Shen Zuan in the capital that night. Riding on the autumn breeze, a leaf flew off from the walnut tree branch and finally rested itself on Hao Ji Chao's shoulder. The door creaked open. Sure Xue Jin gathered his sleeves together and asked calmly, What wind blows you here? We want to avenge him, replied Hao Ji Chao, composed. Sure Xue Jin raised his eyebrows. Are you close to him? No. We wanted to treat him to a beer after the pursuit the other time so that we could trick him again. But he is gone before the beer. We cannot forgive this, Hao Ji Chao said. Only this? Sure Xue Jin gazed up at the sky. Go back. Heavenly King Nye has his plans. Okay. Hao Ji Chao's team left immediately with no hesitation, because they knew Nye Ting would take the matter even more seriously than they did. Perhaps this was also the reason they were willing to risk their lives in Nye Ting's leadership. Slowly pacing back to the courtyard, Chur Xue Jin smiled at Nye Ting who was sitting on his chair. You probably didn't expect that mean kid to be so popular, right? 
Nia Tang looked up. Isn't it just nice? Why did he need to be popular? Only sure Shua Jin understood Nia Ting's meaning. The position of the ninth heavenly king was still vacant. Chen Bailey was standing in front of a window in South Tibet. Suddenly, a ringtone broke the peace. The old priest retrieved a touchscreen phone from his pocket. A very strange scene indeed. However, he did not feel like answering the call upon seeing the caller's name on the screen. It was a super long contact name called the most useless little fatty of the Chens. After a 10-second pause, Chun Bailey picked up the call in the end. Yes, was Wan. Before he could react, he heard wailing bursting out from his phone. Granduncle, you must avenge Lu Xu. Kick their asses. Chen Bailey was worried that Chen Zuan would dirty his robe with his snot even from across the phone. Get lost. In North Europe, a palace was erected from towering mountains half a year ago, surrounded by clouds and fog all year round. The mountain range was then renamed to Unt Holy Asa due to the sudden appearance of the palace. A motorcade drove uphill along the wide and flat road. The deities were never short of money. Their movement slowed down within the mountains. Those clouds and mists provided a natural barrier from the outside world, mystifying the activities inside. It had always been a hotly debated topic among the Northern Europeans about the real lives of the deities. Coral's team did not return immediately after the closure of the remains. They arrived at Emta Holy Asa only after half a month later. We are almost there. You've written quite a number of letters along the way, Coral. Are you going to mail them out in one go? A Class B expert asked. Coral blushed and smiled. I want to record down my life for him to read. The Class B gazed outside the window, distress all over his face. He could not expect how Coral's father would deal with this matter. Suddenly, the mists gave way to the majestic silhouette of a palace. Two five-meter-tall knight sculptures stood dignifiedly outside its gate, each holding an inverted giant sword in its hands. They were clad in brass helmet and iron armor. Even people of the deities could not tell whether they were living or dead. Some people claimed that they had heard breathing sounds from the giant knights in the most silent of nights. Everyone alighted from the cars in front of the palace. They saluted the sculptures as they believed that the knights could be their ancestors, guarding the deities from harm. At this moment, the leader received a call. Soon, he frowned and turned to Coral. Lu Xu from the Heavenly Network has been assassinated. Confirmed. News from the Heavenly Network itself. There could be a war between the network and the collection of gods. Everyone was shocked. Lu Xu was dead. Coral had been mentioning his name more than ten times every day. How could he be suddenly gone? All of them turned to look at Coral, who was simply standing still, her head lowered. Her delicate face was blurred in the shade. In the next instant, the leader suddenly roared, Back down. Everyone. Back down. When they were more than twenty meters away, immense thunder erupted from Coral, blowing up the entire car fleet around her. When she raised her head, everyone could see that her pupils had been replaced with endless lightning. Thunderbolts overflowed from her eyelids, sliding down her cheeks like tears. No one would have expected Coral to suddenly awaken to their ancestors' divine bloodline. She had ascended to class B from D at one stroke. But there was no fear. What everyone could see was just a poor little girl who had just lost the love of her life forever. Chapter 468 The Return of Gods Coral stood still on the mountain. Though motionless, the thunderbolts had no sign of ceasing. When the thunder-filled teardrop fell to the ground, suddenly, a blinding white flash as bright as the sun was emitted from the back of her neck, shooting towards the sky. Is that, the leader of the deities gasped in astonishment. That's Gungner, someone shouted. In the past, Coral's mark of Gungner had always been widely discussed. Out of curiosity, those close to her would even ask her to lift her hair for a look at the mark. It felt like how people were interested in Harry Potter's lightning bolt on his forehead. 
Despite the assertion that Coral would inherit Odin's bloodline at Class B, no one was willing to jump to conclusion in such a significant instance. What if it was merely her birthmark? At the moment, no one had expected Lu Xu's death to have such a deep and incredible impact on Coral. It was believed that power awakening must come with intense emotional stimulations. Thus, her team found it hard to understand how a man she fell in love with at first sight would touch her so greatly. She had skipped class C altogether. They thought that the vast distance would eventually wear out Coral's feelings, no matter how amazing that young man was. At this instant, Coral extended her arm backwards, thrusting her hand through her silver-gold hair as though to grip something behind her neck. Sounds of thunder exploded incessantly. As if to answer to a call, mountain mists formed a giant vortex over the palace. People inside the palace walked out one after another, and even commoners downhill ceased their activities, attracted to the abnormal movement of the clouds in the sky. In the next second, under people's startled stares, Coral pulled out a flash of lightning from the back of her neck. The electrical spear was longer than half an average person's height, and was held tightly in Coral's hand, looking indestructible. The Gungner It is the Gungner. The Gungner has finally returned to the world, the crowd was boiling with excitement. At this very instant, Coral's bloodline had been confirmed. She was Odin, the ruler of all gods. Then, they heard a loud rumble. Following the sound, they saw white light radiating from inside the two knights' visors. With clanks of iron armor, the two knights actually knelt down towards Coral on one knee, supporting themselves with their swords. The knights spoke in a thundering voice, grass dries and flowers wilt. But the land lasts for an eternity, and so will God's return. Instantly, all people of the deities dropped to their knee in front of Coral. Gods will return. But thunders immediately faded away from Coral. In their worship was only a little girl whose face was wet with tears. Just when the outside world was focused on the rising tensions between the heavenly network and the collection of gods, no one noticed the earth-shaking news that erupted within the deities. Suddenly, the group had already forgotten about their past frictions and became unprecedentedly united following Coral's attainment of Odin's bloodline. The leaders of the deities from various countries made the pilgrimage to unto Holy Asa in succession. Meanwhile, Lu Xu's heart twitched with pain when he just reached home. Not literally, though, but because he suddenly realized that Coral's promised money would be gone if the news of his death was spread out. Who would transfer money to a dead man? That was a big price to pay. To Lu Xu, he felt like he had spent a few million euros on the deep sea white sand. Lu Xu was pretty generous when money was not concerned. But once it was converted to hard currencies, Lu Xu found it hard to accept. It was the same as the feeling of ecstasy he felt when he calculated the value equivalent to the amount of broken weapons, invested on his divine water. No way, Lu Xu thought. He had to at least inform Coral. But upon second thoughts, he did not even have a way to contact Coral. What the heck? It was all Nye Ting's fault. Just when he was calculating his loss, Lu Xiaoyu walked out of her room in her pajamas, rubbing her sleepy eyes. Suddenly, tears welled up her eyes. What happened to you, Lu Xu? Lu Xu looked at himself. The makeup was too realistic. With a gaping hole in his stomach and an ashen face, he did not look normal at all. Don't cry. It's just makeup. I had to film something. Lu Xu grinned. As opposed to her usual commanding mien, Lu Xiaoyu came closer with a pitiable look on her face. She gave a careful poke to Lu Xu's wound. In fact, she could tell from Lu Xu's unhindered movement that he was safe and sound. If anyone was to be blamed for the misunderstanding, it could only be Zhang Yutong's makeup artists. Could it be some people in the Heavenly Network had awakened to the cosmetics type and set up an internal beauty department? Shocked, Lu Xiaoyu wiped her tears. It's really makeup. From Lu Xiaoyu's distress, plus 999. Lu Xiaoyu studied Lu Xu for a long while as it was her first time to see Lu Xu in such a pathetic state. 
Just a minute ago, she had planned to on a killing spree if anything had really happened to Lu Xu. But it turned out that she had been fooled. What role did you play? A corpse? Are you serious? Then, he gave a full explanation of the entire story. At this moment, they heard a flurry of footsteps outside their house. Lu Xu was alerted. Who were they? Immediately he drew the curtains close and peeped out through a narrow line. Then, he whispered to Lu Xiaoyu, don't make any sound. Now, I'm a dead person to the outside. I don't know why so many people are here but we must not spill the beans. Suddenly he froze. He saw Lu Li and a large group of Daoyuan class students behind. There were more than 100 people and even the icy Chaoqingzi was in the crowd. Red-eyed, Lu Li arrived at their doorstep. He placed a bunch of white chrysanthemum quietly and left at once. A girl lit a pile of red candles in front of his door. Flames danced softly in the wind. Lu Xu was dumbstruck. What was going on? Were they here to pay tribute? Many girls were crying their eyes out, even though Lu Xu had not even talked to them before. In the end, the crowd had finally dispersed after a long time, leaving Chao Qingxi standing alone in front of his door. A girl who had always been stingy with her words, she suddenly spoke, I will avenge you. Rest in peace. Lu Xu? Did Lu Li start all that? Chapter 469 Huge Sums of Inheritance Residents at the number 4 Xingxi Road were confused about the sudden appearance of the crowd. Last time, Lu Xu's killing of the three human traffickers had left a profound impact on his neighborhood. Now, most of his neighbors knew that the innermost bungalow was occupied by a Daoyuan class student, whose murderous vibe was so strong that no one dared to approach. The residents soon learned that those white chrysanthemums were for Lu Xu. Perplexed, the onlookers discussed among themselves. What happened? He's a martyr now? Didn't you see the golden foundation for him? A student from our Luocheng Daoyuan class made an enemy abroad with some cultivation organization. Then, he was assassinated. So scary. Now he's called a national hero. But I don't think he can be considered one, can he? At this moment, a student walked past, his head was half bald and his eyes red with tears. Upon hearing the comment, he could not help but shouted, Lu Xu I S a national hero. Whoever disagrees can find me, Lu Li, in Daoyuan class. Residents? Why are you so triggered? You freaked us out. Meanwhile, Lu Xu mumbled after the crowd had left, I'm still alive but they all think I'm dead. I. I deserve a pay raise. He was well aware that Nia Ting must have some plans for him, which explained the fake death scheme. However, Zhang Yutong's quick action made him feel like they could not wait to throw him out and that was why they jumped at the opportunity with no delay at all. In order to keep things running smoothly, Lu Xiaoyu suddenly became a talented actress too. Sobbing miserably, she went to put away the white chrysanthemums and candles outside the door. Lu Xu watched everything with a straight face. Even he felt that he had died once. Honestly speaking, he did not expect that so many people would come to ascend him off after his death and that even Chao Qingxi would be willing to avenge him. He had rarely experienced the same feeling before. In the past, with no interest in joining any parties, Lu Xu had always emphasized on personal freedom. But Lu Li's appearance at his doorstep still tugged at his heartstrings. Then, his thought drifted to the girl thousands of miles away. She must be heartbroken upon hearing about his death, he thought. Later in the day Lu Xiaoyu went to school as usual. She was very displeased though, as she had missed yet another opportunity to be Lu Xu's classmate. Not only this, she even had to cover for Lu Xu for the greater good. The first thing to do after she arrived at school was the settlement of admission particulars. Due to the unique nature of her case, the procedures were comparatively much more complicated. However, she crossed way with the Chinese teacher Lu Hong the moment she entered the staff room. 
The teacher made a deep bow to Lu Xiaoyu first. My apologies for mistaking you. Lu Xu is indeed a national hero and I should not have given your essay such a poor score. You are a grade skipper with high capabilities. Lu Xiaoyu dismissed her with a wave. Ignorance can be forgiven. From Lu Hong's distress, plus 299. How could a kid speak to her teacher in this manner? The atmosphere soon became awkward. Shi Qingyan had a hunch that he might have a tough time being the form teacher this year. When Lu Xu was watching Naruto at home, he was startled by a wave of energy underground. Instantly, he was on his guard as only very few would break into his house during this sensitive period. It was possible that the visitor had come with hostility. As a result, as soon as the Earth-type metahuman who had just brought Lu Xu home in the morning emerged from the floor with Yu Mingyu, they saw two glistening spears aimed directly at their heads. Eh, friendly forces, the Earth-type metahuman immediately left after sending Yu Mingyu there. When Lu Xu and Yu Mingyu were left alone in one room, Lu Xu was starting to get goosebumps. Why are you here? To check with you regarding your future identity. I suppose you've already known what you are going to do in the future, right? Put down your spear first, Yu Mingyu said. Assured that he was quite normal under usual circumstances, Lu Xu felt relieved. Yes. Pay raise. From Yu Mingyu's distress, plus 199. Field agents enjoy excellent subsidies. You can rest assured about that. Besides, you'll get a huge sum of compensation if you are sacrificed. Wait, wait. It's fine, we are only talking about subsidies and not compensation, Lu Xu interrupted him. So, where am I going? Who will I be? What should I do? Be yourself. A high school student, orphan, often bullied. Put your spear down. Yu Mingyu jolted. Lu Xu's face darkened. I'm afraid you have some misunderstanding about me. What do you mean by off and bullied? Then he realized that no distress points were produced as he pointed his spear at Yu Mingyu's head. <laughs> no matter how much you denied it, your emotions were pretty honest. Yu Mingyu reconsidered his choice of words. Isolated, then. Lu Xu felt suspicious of the plan. What's there to act as an ordinary high school student? What's the point of being a spy like this? We are on the same team so can't you at least show some respect? What's your problem? I won't hurt you anyway so why do you keep pointing at me with your spear? Yu Mingyu snapped. Respect? Right. Then he went to his bedroom and came back with another spear. In order to show my respect, which spear do you prefer me to use on you? Please suit yourself. Now he had the freedom of choice. Was that not enough respect? From Yu Mingyu's distress, plus 666. Do you have the right definition of respect, this time, Yu Mingyu was angry? This high school student's identity has certain value. His parents were killed during the internal conflicts of the collection of gods, leaving behind an inheritance. Inheritance? What inheritance that had finally caught Lu Xu's interest? Heavenly King Nye has said that in addition to the field agent's allowances, this inheritance belongs to you too, replied Yu Mingyu. My goodness. Lu Xu immediately put his spear away. You see? <laughs> I'm really sorry about earlier. I was just kidding. Please don't take it too hard. Yu Mingyu was suddenly reminded of Heavenly King Ye's advice. If you can't talk any sense into this kid, the inheritance will be your trump card. Actually, one of our people has long since been lurking around him. She's their maid, responsible for gathering their information. The initial plan was to instigate a rebellion against his parents, but the jingoists of the collection of gods were even faster. As for this high school student, his parents were representatives of the conservatives and also leaders of an inherited trade. Now, the conservatives wants to use this student as a puppet against the jingoists of the collection of gods. In secret, of course. Chapter 470, What Inheritance? 
Lu Xu was enlightened. So it turned out to be an internal conflict in the collection of gods between the conservatives and the jingoists. Now, however, the former could only gather strength in the name of their leader's son. Lu Xu soon realized the gist of the issue. Where is that student now? Suicided three days ago. Wrist split. The maid, which is ours, found his body and applied for a sick leave from the school. The incident has been concealed and the body disposed of. But we don't want to miss this opportunity, replied Yu Mingyu. A valuable case which would be pitiful to let go indeed. Unwilling to give up, Zhang Yutong's team was interested in causing more trouble inside the collection of gods. Thus, he and Ye Ting had entrusted the great responsibility to Lu Xu. No wonder Zhang Yutong came in a hurry. Their time was running out and the school would notice something suspicious about the sick leave soon. Lu Xu asked, then how do I get there? And any other preparation do I need? Other preparation? No need, of course. Yu Mingyu paused before he continued, Heavenly King Ye said that you are fully prepared. You have a mask for disguise and you are good at swimming. Huh? Swimming? Lu Xu was stunned at once. Were they expecting him to swim to Japan with his water-type abilities? Coupled with Li Yixiao's report on the relic, Lu Xu indeed seemed to be very competent for the job now. But I don't know how to speak Japanese, Lu Xu said. Probably the Heavenly Network was still unaware of his proficiency in Japanese, which in fact was already better than his English. Lu Xu was fully confident of completing the task well. Yu Mingyu nodded. Right, that's the difficult part. But this student is an introvert and rarely talks in school. Thus, it'll be just fine to act shy at the start. Then, the maid will teach you Japanese step by step. After all, that student had few friends, and no one knows him well. How could the son of the conservative leaders be an introvert? Should he not be an arrogant individual full of a sense of superiority? Yu Mingyu read his mind. Sometimes, those born in an influential family can be rather cowardly. It's pretty normal. This kid is indeed a weakling. Otherwise, he wouldn't have chosen to end his life in the face of his parents' death and the conservative superior's schemes. It's said that his father had been training him in cultivation, but no one has seen him using his powers, even when he was bullied. Therefore, he became a laughingstock among the conservative and turned himself the most suitable puppet, at hand since he would certainly follow whatever he's told. Even so, I don't think he is an important piece of the puzzle. Lu Xu still found it hard to understand. Although his powers remain a secret, the conservatives trust that he is strong. More crucially, he inherited his father's family's skills. That made sense now. At the end of the day, they were just interested in the boys, aka Kurihara Yusuk's, inherited trade. When am I leaving? Lu Xu asked. As soon as possible. When can I get the inheritance? Lu Xu demanded. The maid will pass it to you when you reach Japan. Lu Xu was impressed. This maid must be really competent to obtain her boss's bank card and password. Aren't you going to train me in specialized knowledge like spy skills or anything? Lu Xu was in disbelief. Were they going to send him, a newbie, over just like this? Heavenly King Ye said you can do it with your versatility. He doesn't think you need any training. After that, Yu Mingyu immediately called the Earth-type metahuman to fetch him. It seemed that Nye Ting had really high expectations of himself, Lu Xu thought. Wait a minute, they hadn't told him what the aim of the mission was. Was he going to do it freely too? Then Lu Xu suddenly saw the light. In fact, there was no aim at all, as Nye Ting simply expected him to wreak havoc in the collection of gods. Li Xiao might have been sent for the task if not for his unsuitable profile. Is the foreign policy of the Heavenly Network so free and easy now? In the end, instead of swimming across the sea, a brand new passport and all relevant identity documents were delivered to Lu Xu, together with a night flight ticket to Nishinokyo. 
The person on the identification documents was a stranger, who served solely as an identity for Lu Xu to pass the customs. Lu Xu changed his appearance effortlessly. After he reached Japan later that day, he could start his mission once he turned into Kirihara Yusuke unnoticed. There was no time to say goodbye to Lu Xiaoyu due to the tight schedule. Thus, he sent her a message. As what we've discussed, we need to do others a favor in exchange for their help. I'm going to make some quick money in Nishinokyo. BRB. Be a good student and don't paste missing person posters of me around. From Lu Xiaoyu's distress, plus 999. The mission was not that difficult for Lu Xu. Since there was no target specified, he would take it as a holiday and cause trouble when possible. If things went out of control, he could change identity and escape immediately. In short, he was going to be a troublemaker aiming for the inheritance. Standing in front of the airport window, Lu Xu gazed out at the planes taking off and touching down. He did not expect himself to be going abroad so soon, and, alone. It was said that Japanese girls wore short skirts to school and were barelegged even in winter. Lu Xu wondered if that was true. Lu Hai Lane. In the courtyard, Shi Shuajin dipped a stick of Chinese onion in sauce and rolled it in a Shanzhou stir-fried pancake. He took a bite and asked, You certainly trust him a lot, don't you? Sending him there without even a concrete mission target? Say, to incite a battle between the jingoists and the conservatives or to instigate a rebellion against the remaining forces of the conservatives. Shi Shuajin had always believed that an aim was indispensable in the execution of a mission as Lu Xu could not be going around aimlessly. Nya Ting frowned. Is that thing really so nice? Shi Shuajin looked at the pancake and gazed up at Nya Ting again. Then, he took another bite. His chewing sound was clearly audible. Even if there's no need for an aim, what if he hates you for being tricked? Sure, Shua Jean asked. I'm afraid he won't go if not for the trick. What if he hates me? There are so many people who hate me and he won't be a significant addition to the list. Meanwhile, Lu Xu had come to the doorstep of a dojo named Baika with the materials provided. It was a compact and elegantly decorated courtyard. Inside, the wooden architecture exuded hues of Japanese cultures, simple yet delicate. A middle-aged woman, dressed in casual clothing, smiled at Lu Xu. You are finally here. Lu Xu asked, where's the inheritance? Confusion crossed over the woman's face. What inheritance? Lu Xu gazed up at the sky. No wonder I felt that there's something bloody off. Nya Ting, I'm not done with you on this matter. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Last half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to 